Gary O'Shea. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please like and share. There's more on the channel. Always cars in summer. The following commentary includes excerpts from John B. Schnapp's Corporate Strategies of the Automotive Manufacturers. Report date 1978, prepared by Harbridge House, Inc. For General Motors Corporation by 1968, the market trend became the proliferation of GM's personal and luxury cars that catered to the increased usage of options. Some of these models included the Corvette Stingray, Chevrolet Caprice and Camaro, the Pontiac Le Mans and Firebird, Cadillac Eldorado and the entire Cadillac line, and Oldsmobile Toronado, Cutlass Supreme, Electra 225, and the Delmont 88. During the 1960s, GM's success at selling luxury options was unparalleled. In 1969, for example, GM outsold the other major U.S. automakers, including Ford Motor Company and Chrysler Plymouth Dodge, in four of the most expensive options. Automatic transmissions, V8 engines, air conditioners, and power steering. Although GM had been the price leader since it saw its historic market share lead at the start of the 60s, in the fall of 1966, 67, and again in 1968, Ford or Chrysler appeared with prices first, and GM followed with prices that were lower. Within a week, the other two had adjusted their prices of comparable models again to be close to those of GM. Increasing numbers of younger drivers were asking for cars with high performance and style. Chrysler increased its model line over the period 1962 to 1968 from 92 to a highest ever 140 models. The Plymouth Barracuda was redesigned for the 1967 model year. After Chrysler introduced the Barracuda in 64, they followed with a series of muscle cars standard models equipped with powerful engines and beefed up suspensions. Chrysler increased its investment program once again in 1968, one year after sharp increases in sales and earnings. 
These programs were aimed at modernizing and increasing manufacturing capacity in foundry, stamping, and assembly plants. By 1969, Ford had reduced hydrocarbon emissions in its cars by 80% and carbon monoxide by almost 70% relative to its 1960 models. Ford was the first U.S. manufacturer to establish an automotive safety center and throughout the latter 60s, Ford participated quite effectively in motor sports to provide a proving ground for evaluating advanced automotive technology to help in producing safer cars. Now some more of our very, very lovely engine rever, here's Karen Jensen. 